Getting married to a narcissist is like signing a contract with a devil. You get trapped, if not for life, but for decades. Once you get married to them, they get a free license to abuse you in whatever way they want to. Quite cleverly, they sell this idea of wanting to get married, wanting to have a family together, wanting to have children and then living happily after to you. And you buy it. Why? Because you do not know what their real intentions are. To you, they seem to have same needs and wants and that creates this condition of familiarity. You feel like you have finally found the person that you can settle down with, that you can get married to and have children with. But deep down, their intentions are completely different than what they present. Their intentions are to use you. Their intentions are to trap you. Their intentions are to get unlimited source of supply without ever reciprocating. That is why they get married. Let's talk about this further in today's episode. Hi, I am Danish, a narcissistic abuse recovery professional. In today's episode, we are going to process why marriage with a narcissist is a trap and what you should do if you are stuck in it. If that sounds interesting and you are eager to learn more, please make sure to subscribe because your subscription helps in spreading awareness about narcissistic abuse and it helps many survivors connect with this community that I'm trying to get, create here. Thank you so much for tuning in if you're new and I welcome you to my channel. Let's lay the foundation for today's episode by watching a small video clip together. Getting married to a narcissist is a trap, a scam. Why? Because when you get married to them, you secretly agree to being a full-time maid, the only person who takes care of responsibilities such as cooking, cleaning, earning, raising children, going out and just making sure everything is wor working perfectly fine. You're the only functional person who just keeps everything running. And what do you get back? Humiliation belittling, being told you're not enough, being cheated on, a lot of betrayal and a, a extreme deficit of love, care, compassion and respect from your partner. It doesn't stop there. Then you also have to be prepared for the divorce battles, the court battles, the custody battles, this trial, that trial, mediations, financial abuse, pre-separation, post-separation. Let me make one thing very clear. It's not only women who get trapped in such marriages with narcissistic men. There are many men who have been thoroughly taken advantage of and abused by nasty narcissistic women. I personally know of many experiences and many stories and I'll share some in the later part of this episode. So stay until the end. When you meet a narcissist whose real intention is to use you and throw you away, you develop a connection that feels unreal. The intensity is beyond comprehension. Everything is amazing. They look nice. They act nice. They're the most pleasant person you have ever known. It feels like you have met your soulmate. You have been waiting for this person for your entire life and so on. The saga goes on. You know this is quite common in all narcissistic relationships. But what is very different with this type of narcissist who wants to quickly get married is that they want to fasten up everything. Within a month, they propose and then right after that, they want to have you in their life. They want to live with you. They want to move in. They want to get married. They want to become a permanent part of life. At least that is how they make it seem like. But their real intentions are to get the benefits that you have to offer. Let's say you have a lot of money and you have worked really hard to get to the point where you are at right now in your life or you are influential or you have something that they don't have. The best way to get access to those things and get unlimited supply is to get married. It's as simple as that. It's quite egocentric. It's all about them. They do not marry you for the things or the reasons they say they are marrying you. They're actually marrying you for all the benefits they will get from marrying you. Once you get married to them, that intensity slowly, slowly dies and the devaluation begins. 
The things they admired you for once now become your your faults. They are ashamed of you introducing you to their friends. They don't want to be around you because you're too fat, you're too thin. You are too ugly for them. They're so better than you. Every friend of theirs tells them that this is not a right fit. They, they can't stand you anymore because you too, you're too whiny, you're too khaki, or you're too demanding, you're too clingy. Every single thing becomes a problem and you're forced to get stu stuck in a cycle of restoring the homeostasis continuously. What does that mean and how does that look like? Well, you get stuck in a state of wanting them to become nice again. Seeing that pleasant side you saw in the beginning of the relationship. Basically bringing the virgin back, the virgin that you fell in love with because the person they have become now is unrecognizable. You don't know who they are. So what do you keep doing? You keep chasing the breadcrumbs they throw at you here and there. The intermittent reinforcement makes leaving such a relationship extremely difficult and it creates a bond of Herculean strength. What do we call that? Trauma bond. Out of the need to regulate yourself through gain gaining their approval and through pleasing them, what do you end up doing? You end up complying and doing exactly what they want you to do and it's still not enough. Like a parasite, they suck out the life force out of you, which can be your money, your hard earned and saved money. Every single penny is spent on their college, on this project, on that project. So they fatten up using the energy that you have to offer, using every resource that you have collected for years. They fly way up high in the sky but using your wings. You give them the wings to do so. Instead of being grateful, what do they do? They belittle you. They're like a parasite, as I always keep saying, who enters your body, sucks out your life force, and then leaves your body like a shell. This is, this is a literal example of how such a parasite behaves. They find you, attack you, take shelter in your body. Once they're done, they just leave. The crazy thing is, they then belittle you for becoming a shell, completely disregarding the fact that they turned you into what you have become now. Marriage with a narcissist is the biggest scam ever. If we talk about how all of this looks practically, we'd be looking at you become, becoming a full-time maid, the one who earns all the money, who takes care of all the responsibilities, including the responsibility of raising your children, who cooks and cleans, or who supports them in every project they want to accomplish in their life, who provides all the financial support for what? To get abuse back. They enter this marriage with nothing, but they leave with everything. They then want to separate, or if you want to be with them, you have to do this, 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 this. If you do not fulfill these criteria, if you do not meet their needs, then they're out. They don't want to do it anymore. Out of being trauma bonded, having cognitive dissonance, and because they have convinced you it's your fault, you're the crazy one, you're the perpetrator, you're the narcissist, you're the abuser, you feel compelled to give in, which means and includes, but is not limited to selling your businesses, leaving your job, changing, changing locations, selling the things that you love, abandoning the things that you have always loved to do, just basically changing yourself and becoming a virgin that only pleases them. I remember the experiences of a person who was a man and was, narciss was married to a narcissistic woman. The narcissistic woman first isolated him from his family and then created a rift between him and his children because he was out there earning money and uh, doing all the things he was told to do by the narcissistic wife. And then finally, she, she made it seem like he has never been available for them, for the family, and he has abandoned the family and so on. She left the country, shifted to a different country, made him uh, put the house on her name, and if he desired to be with her, then he would have to leave everything behind in his home country 
and shift there and become a total slave. She was brutally using him towards the end of the marriage and guilt tripping him for being a bad father and for abandoning his children. Clearly to everyone who was objectively looking at the marriage, they could see how monstrous she was being. But for him, it didn't make any sense. He felt like he truly was being a bad father and he had all the reasons and he truly has to put in more efforts to make it work. It is his fault. That is what he was brainwashed into believing. When you are stuck in such a marriage, you know something is wrong, but you feel it's your fault. The narcissist voice keeps talking to you, putting you down even in their absence. So you keep trying and trying and trying even when others tell you not to. If you're stuck in such a marriage, the first thing that I request you to do is take a step back and see what the common message is. The message that you're getting from every person who knows about your situation and tells you to leave. Ask them why. List all the reasons. Yes, you may want to continue. Your guilt is strong. I get it. Yes, continue as much as you want to. Give it as many tries as you want to, but also create some space for the feedback that you are getting from others. It is impossible for all these people to be wrong and the narcissist to be the only right person. It is statistically impossible. See what your reasoning is. See beyond your emotions. Try to look at the bigger picture and then try to see what they are showing you. Pay attention. Set a deadline for yourself and then be re ready to say bye when the time comes. The narcissist has created this dynamic where you are the giver and they are the taker. Ask yourself why is there no reciprocity? Why do you have to fulfill all these criteria? Where is yourself in all of this? Where are your needs and wants? And why are they not getting fulfilled? Do not settle for breadcrumbs for they are insignificant. They won't be able to help you stay in this marriage when it comes to you know, years that lie ahead of you. Look at the consequences that other people are trying to show you. See beyond what the narcissist has trapped you in. Change your perceptions by understanding how these people function and by looking at your marriage and understanding that it was betrayal, a big betrayal right from the beginning until the very end. Stop blaming yourself because that is what the narcissist wants you to do. For as long as you will blame yourself, the narcissist will win. Be compassionate towards yourself because that is what is needed the most and that is what will help you to defeat the narcissist, to see them for who they are. With that, let's bring this episode to an end. If you resonated with this episode, if you found it helpful, let me know in the comments. I'll talk with you in the next one. Until then, let the healing begin and continue.